once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., and the coach will be joining us momentarily. Oh, boy, Don, what a magnificent night on Saturday night as the Hurricanes took on Virginia Tech in front of a sold-out Hard Rock Stadium and a great win for the Canes. It was, Joe, and i, I got to congratulate the fans. I pulled up there before 5 o'clock, and it was packed, and once the game got started, you could feel the impact that the crowd had on the game, but you go offensively for the University of Miami. They scored 28 points, almost three times the average that Virginia Tech was giving up coming into that ball game. And Manny Diaz and the defense were just spectacular. They swarmed the football. They didn't allow their quarterback, Virginia Tech's quarterback, to do what he does best, and that's get outside the pocket and run. They shut him down, and they continued to win the giveaway-takeaway battle. Took the ball away four times, so the turnover chain was awarded four different times. It certainly was, and, and what excitement it brings to the defense. It also brings excitement to the crowd, but you talk about turnovers. The defense had to handle sudden change. Miami turned the football over far too many times than anyone would like, but our defense stood up. They came back out on the field and did what they had to do after sudden change. For the first time since 1989, Notre Dame is going to play Miami in Miami. Now, they were here a couple years ago for a championship game, but the Irish come in ranked number three in the nation. This has college football playoff ramifications. Well, it's a playoff game, but I want to remind people, this is a rivalry. I don't know that this team realizes the, the history of this game, but there's a bunch of guys that played this game in the in the 70s and 80s and 60s and, and, and 90s, and you look at this, a lot has been uh, hinged on this contest over the years, and I think it's going to be a fantastic game, but it's a rivalry game for a lot of folks. Okay, it's Miami and Notre Dame Saturday at 8 o'clock at Hard Rock Stadium. Right now, let's take a look back at last week's highlights as the Canes beat Virginia Tech, brought to you by UL Sports Medicine. We'll get you back in the game. Miami and Virginia Tech, and away we go. Rozier, he throws, Enzo, Bales has got it. Touchdown, Miami! Hand off the homer, left side, cut to the right. Got Homer's got open field, here we go. Travis Homer takes it all the way home. Up top, looking left, Rose caught by Chris Hernan. Near sideline to the 30, steps out of a tackle. He's at the 20, gets a block at the 15, 10, 5. Chris Hernan takes it all the way home. He's gonna run it right up the middle. He's got room. He's at the 10, 5. He scores. Standing up, Malik Rozier at a quarterback draw. Miami got it back. Jonathan Garvin swatted it away, and he picked it up. The freshman has it, and it's a turnover. What a play by the freshman from Lake Worth. Jackson, looking to throw, aims this one for the end zone. For Savoy, intercepted by Miami. Sheldrick Redwine has it. He cuts back at the 10, toward the near sideline to the 20. He's got a convoy at the 30, 35, out to the 40 yard line. Sheldrick Redwine. With an interception, and Miami brings the curtains down on the show at Hard Rock Stadium. A magnificent night for the University of Miami Hurricanes. Hello once again, everybody, and welcome to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagak, alongside my broadcast partner, Don Bailey Jr., and, of course, the coach, University of Miami head coach Mark Rick, and the Canes coming off a huge win against the Hokies of Virginia Tech to continue their winning ways. Coach, congratulations. What a magnificent night. Good. Ride. It was great. It was great because of the victory, obviously, but it was, great. it was great just to see the fans being there and just being so loud and you know, it starts with our student body being there early, you know, and the band ready to rock and roll. And, um, I mean, it was pretty awesome. The cane walk was great. And even before that, you you, you roll in and, uh, you know, I'm in there uh, with Coach uh, Coach Hudek, Ed Hudek, Chief Hudek, and I can hear kind of what's going on in the communication of trying to get in. They're like, oh, the ramp is like jam packed full and I don't know if we're gonna be able to blast our way through there you know when the team comes in and all the cars are trying to get in still this early you know it was wonderful and uh, and then you know all the tailgating covered 
every inch of ground out there. So it was it was a great night. Coach, the players talk about it immediately immediately <clears throat> in the post game about how when they come in and they see the whole crowd there, yeah. it, it fires them up all. Yeah, it does. It, it it all works together. You know, everybody wants a winning team, and in order to have a winning team, you got to support it. And when you support it, the the recruits see it, the players see it, um, and then it makes people want to be a part of it. It's contagious and. Right now, um, you know, things are going extremely well in that regard, and we're thankful for it. You see it all over South Florida, Coach, now. Uh, hurricane fever is, is building yeah. everywhere, and yeah. uh, the, the University of Miami is such a representation of the community, and the community really right. wraps its arms around the University Well, of you know, I knew that coming in, and, and one of the things that my wife and I wanted to do was to get involved in the community the best we can and get involved with the Little League programs and and do some things maybe out, outside of the game of football. Even our team, you know, I think the number one team in American community service uh, across America, uh, just a, a group of guys that are willing to, to you know, get in there and, and help people in need and, and also em just embrace the community in general. And, and uh, we, we love the fact that everybody's getting excited about it and, and they're, they're coming out in big numbers. And it's just, it's good momentum right now and hopefully we can keep it going. Coach, you started out aggressive. You get down there and you go for it on the goal line and come away with no points, but you said, we're yeah. going for it. Yeah, I mean, that was part of the aggressive nature. And I, and I'm Mr. Get the points, no matter how <laughs> bad it hurts. But I just was so sick that we were not scoring at that point. Uh, three points probably would have been nice to have at that point. At, at that point. But, um, you know, the thing of it is when you go for it down that close, the good news is your defense has got 96 yards behind them, and if you get an early, if you get a stop, three and out, and they make them punt, you get the ball maybe midfield or better. Um, you know, it could turn out to be a score the next time around, but uh, not probably the wisest decision. Uh, the play I called really wasn't worth a hoot. I could say that the decision to go for it was kind of part of our thought process going in that we had to be uh, aggressive and we, and we couldn't flinch. Well, you had a three-headed uh, rushing attack between uh, Malik Rozier, Travis Homer, and uh, DJ Dallas, even guy involved right. carrying the football. So, and you ran yeah. the ball for the most yards on them, uh, over 200 yards, the most they've given up this year. Yeah, that was a. I'll tell you what, the offensive line played great. The, the you know Herndon blocked very well. Um, our receivers downfield got back to blocking really well, um, but there were some things that we did schematically that were really good. Uh, some of the runs that Malik, that, you know, made early in the game, and even more than a couple times, uh, was it was kind of a new design, a way to try to divide the defense and hit hit him right up the gut. And uh, you know, Coach Brown, Coach Searles, they spent a lot of time in the run game throughout the week, like like on a Monday all day long. That's all they're doing is looking at things, uh, ways to, to run the ball, and it's very hard to get uh, running back yardage on these guys. Um, and uh, to have that 67-yarder or whatever it was break out, that was, that was my favorite play of the game. <laughs> I mean, just hand off inside zone and the thing pop and it go to the house. I mean, those are the things that have to happen every so often to get your running stats where they belong. Okay, so this doesn't count <clears throat> as rushing yards, but uh, he looked like a running back. He went for 35 yards, I think. Might be your new short short yards back, RJ. RJ McIntosh. Yeah. He scooped up that, that fumble. Yeah. Just so much fun to watch these guys get turnovers and, and then the reaction of the sideline and the fans when they break out the chain. I can't imagine. I mean, it's Christmas season, right? I mean, how many little oh. kids are going to get a turnover chain for That's Christmas? Right. I mean, I mean, we, we should have trademark. Right. We should have had a trademark on that. Yeah. I don't know who's getting the royalties for that, but God bless him. Well, the fun is too—you get to see the personality of yeah. the of the young man that gets yeah. the takeaway, right? I mean, they come oh, to the yeah. sideline, they can well, do themselves. Well, you a watch bit. that reaction, but you also watch the teammates around them. Yeah, their reaction. Yeah, I mean, it's not like just the guy who gets us happy. They're all happy. The coaches are happy. The fans are happy. I'm happy, <laughs> you know. So uh, it's uh, hopefully we can just keep it going. And while we're on that topic, it was four more takeaways, <clears throat> uh, three interceptions, and a fumble recovery. So that's what you want from this oh, yeah. swarming defense. Not only the takeaways, but uh, four sacks again, eight tackles for losses. Right. I, I think both teams knew in order to defeat the defense you're about to play, you had to 
you had to take some shots. You had to maybe take a few chances. You might have to probably run your quarterback more than you would normally run the quarterback. And uh, and I think both sides weren't going to flinch. And, and because of it, some, some balls got up for grabs. And, and there were some interceptions and turnovers. But, um, you know, without them, you know, I, I don't know if we win the game or not, to be honest with you. We did have a pretty good margin, but a lot of it had to do with stopping their momentum through a, through getting a turnover. All right, we're going to come back and uh, talk about the big week ahead for the University of Miami. <clears throat> Canes come off a 28-10 victory against Virginia Tech. You keep winning, the stakes get higher. Notre Dame comes to town this week. We'll talk about the Irish and much more as we continue on the Mark Rick Show right after this. Happy to welcome you back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive, Joe Zagacki and Don Bailey Jr., of course, University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. All right, the Fighting Irish will be coming to town this week, an 8 o'clock kickoff on Saturday night. Uh, well, let's just talk about where you are right now, because you're undefeated. You're about this close to the uh, Coastal Division Championship. The magic number is one, one win by you. One loss by Virginia it doesn't really matter which combination it is. Right. Well, I mean, I understand it does, but yeah, they yeah. could lose and and you know, right. This when is not when a it comes to mathematically, you know, winning the coastal, it's it, like you say, if they lose any game right. of the last three, or we win at least just one game in 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 the you know ACC play, then we'll we'll represent. So um, it, it's. It's something that means so much to our program. We know how important it is. We, we want to make history uh, being the first team to represent, uh, you, know, in the co you know, in the ACC championship game. And uh, we knew some team from Miami would make it one day, and we've been hoping it's us, and, and that's what we're fighting for. So that's really important. But now we're playing a game that's really it's a non-conference game. It doesn't matter what happens in the game in regard to uh, whether you win the ACC or not, or whether you win the Coastal Division or not, but it's a, it's a monster game uh, when it comes to trying to keep the momentum that we have and trying to put ourselves in position you know, for even bigger things down the road. Uh, you've won 13 in a row, and maybe some of this started at halftime <clears throat> last year against Notre Dame. Got off to a rough start against the Irish and then played a great second half. Came within a hair's breadth of winning that game, and ever since that first yeah. half of Notre Dame, you really have played great football. We have. It's, uh, gosh, you know, a year ago, the games that were really close, we lost. You know, this year, the games that were close, we won. And then, you know, you can't help but build momentum because of that. And, and um, but, I mean, I don't know why it's we've had that string other than everybody just focusing and banging away and trusting and believing. And, and you know, you got to go back to the former staff and know that they, they recruited some really good players. And there were a bunch of them, you know, here when we got here, we know that we've added to that uh, group of talent. And, um, and everybody's just on the same page. When a coaching staff works together like ours does, the kids see us interact with each other and the trust we have with each other. And it, it bleeds down into the, into the players as well. Coach, these guys as a group, offense, defense, special teams, it, there's leadership there, but I don't. It's been a long time I've seen a team like this. I mean, yeah. there's there's truly love and respect amongst everybody. Yeah, you, you try so hard to build that. You know, that's one of the greatest ingredients of a of a great team is the unity of it and the hopefully the the love for each other because you know there's going to be adverse times. There's going to be bad plays. There's going to be bad halves of football. Um, you know, there might even be a loss or two that you got to somehow recover from and, and if you don't have some unity on the front end you've got no chance at all and so that's why we try to build it from the very first day of our off-season conditioning program I mean, those mat drills when you work as hard as they work together and they have to do it together to get it right you, you start investing in one another you see your other you see the other teammates working and it just builds trust and confidence. It really hit home with me when Malik said in the post game that after he threw some interceptions the defensive guys came over yeah. and started telling him, hey, we got you covered, we got your back. And yeah. he said, says he never remembers that happening before. Yeah, and that, that's rare, you know, um, but it's good. It's, it, it just shows the, the sign of the unity and the, and the leadership on both sides of the ball. But uh, guys truly have been stepping up, taking ownership, 
and uh, not waiting for a coach to correct something or not waiting for a coach to try to pick up a player and um, you know when they're down so it's it's good stuff all right when we come back we'll talk about the fighting Irish of Notre Dame they come rolling in here on Saturday night at 8 o'clock Canes and the Irish <clears> at Hard Rock Stadium back with more with the University of Miami head coach Mark Rick right after this Welcome back to the Mark Rick Show, brought to you by Williamson Automotive. Joe Zagacki alongside former Hurricane Center and team captain Don Bailey Jr. and the coach Mark Rick. And uh, the Irish come in on Saturday night at 8 o'clock. Last week, you said, well, you told the team, this is why we come to the University of Miami for games like this. Except here comes right. another one. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what happens when you when you win. You get to do it, you get to do it again. And um, we're, we're excited about it and all that good stuff, but... I tell you what kind of tempers everything is when you start watching the film of your opponent. <laughs> You're like, okay, we got our work cut out for us, and, um, and we know we better focus and forget about all the stuff other than do your job. Um, I'm curious. You seem to be having a lot of fun here, and you played in so many uh, or coached in so many big games in Georgia. Right. Now you got the University of Miami in big games this year. Did you think that yeah. it would happen this quickly to be in games oh, this big? I don't big? know. I've always used the term that I'm not going to put a ceiling on what a team can do in any given year. And, and I, I told the guys when the season started, there won't be a team we play that we're not capable of beating. I'm not saying we're going to beat down everybody, but when we go into every game, we're going to have a chance. We, we physically have enough skill and enough strength and enough uh, experience to battle everybody we play so why not you know but you know you have to earn it you have to earn I always use the term you got to earn the right for victory and that that's preparation do you prepare the way you should and when you do then when you get there you've got a chance to perform well as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show hurricane fever is everywhere you drive up and down the street you see hurricane flags now and hurricane shirts and uh, you're going to need a lot of hurricane fever on Saturday night. Yeah, we need it, and we'll get it. Yeah. I, mean, I have no doubt in my mind that uh, hard rock is going to be rocking and uh, rocking for the Canes, so we're, we're fired up. It's probably exactly what you envisioned, though, what it could be, right? And that's what you have to do. You, you have to have, you got to dream big. You know, I was talking about, you know, like people, some people were talking about Shaq Quarterman and the, some of the things he says. Well, that guy, he dreams big, you know, and I'm not going to squelch it, you know what I mean? Because he, he wants to be as great as some of the teams have been in the past, and he wants to be as great as some of the players that played his position in the past. So, I mean, why not dream big and, and then just go after it? You never know when the magic carpet is going to knock on your door and go for a ride. <laughs> well, we're on a good ride now, and uh, hopefully we can continue it. All right, Coach. Thanks very much. The very best of luck against Notre Dame. All right. Thank you. All right, that's University of Miami head coach Mark Rick. Don't forget, Saturday night, Miami and Notre Dame at Hard Rock Stadium, 8 o'clock kickoff. For Don Bailey Jr. and the coach, I'm Joseph Gacky. We'll see you next time right here on the Mark Rick Show.